Hi booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be all the books that I plan on reading in the month of February. This month is a bit of a full month as you're going to find out. I have quite a few books to read. I have the monthly book club pick, I have my usual wheel of TBR spins and I've decided that I'm going to take part in a readathon that I just saw announced uh, for the month of February. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's quite a full month and I've only managed to double up on one of the books, um, putting it across more than one selection. And yeah, and I haven't managed to pick a book that I want to read in February yet either from a previous February. So definitely going to be a full month of reading. So let's see how I got on. Uh, first of all, I'm going to tell you about the book club pick. The book club pick for this month is the All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dore. This is an extremely popular book. I think it's been a bit of a booktube darling and as I found out it is quite a popular book amongst the general population as a whole. I normally try and get my book club picks from the library um, purely because the book club the the picks that we tend to have push me out of my comfort zone really and they're not books that I know whether I would want to keep on my shelves so I don't tend to actually buy them brand new um but it looks like I'm gonna have to do it this month because uh, there are about 25 copies of this book across my library service local area and that combines a various uh, number of um council areas in the UK um, with quite a number of libraries between them and every single copy is either in transit between libraries uh, being transported to someone who wants to um, borrow the book is on hold because it's waiting for it to come free um, so that it can be transported around a library for someone to borrow it or it's out on loan and so I'm not going to get a copy of this book very, very quickly this month. Uh, so, yes, but I am looking forward to picking it up. It is, um, I think, pre-World War Two, and it's about two young people um, who have very different lives. One um, young French girl and one young German boy. The French girl is blind and she lives her life in mazes. Her father sets them up for her. Um, primarily one of the city of Paris where she lives so that she, wherever she is in the city she would know exactly where to go to get home and the young German boy he is a boy destined to work in the mines all his life until he comes to the attention of the Hitler youth I don't know anything else about it than that it does sound like it's going to be one that's going to challenge me but in a good way because it's going to bring out the emotions and it's going to be talking about subjects that aren't ones that I normally explore with my reading. So I'm really looking forward to picking this up and I think I probably may even be making it a priority for the month. So let's move on and talk about the spins for this month. So I've only done two spins um, because I don't think I can handle anything more than that um, this month. So let's go on and um, see what my first spin was. Right, so here's the wheel left over from last month. The final prompt that came out in January's spins was a book that starts with the letter C. So I'll just run my randomizer app and I'll replace that and come back to you. Okay, so as you saw from the last clip, we're replacing a book that starts with C with a book that starts with M. So let's run the first spin and see what comes out. Okay, so it's a memoir or a biography. Okay, so the first spin has given me a memoir or biography. Now, I don't tend to have these um, on my TBR, unfortunately. So I've had to find one um, 
that I didn't own so I've had to buy it so it does go against the um, read your backlist because I haven't got any that I haven't read um, but it is one that I've been meaning to read for a long time so it was on my virtual TBR rather than my actual TBR so let's just call this a win um, but I've picked Let's Do It by um, Jasper Reese. this is a biography of the early life um, of Victoria Wood Victoria Wood for those who don't know she was a British comedian extremely funny she passed away in 2016 but she is absolutely hilarious. I am, have loved everything I've ever watched by her. Um, uh, she was a genius uh, when it came to comedy. Uh, if you don't know who she is, Google her. She has some extremely funny songs. Um, they're my, one of my particular favourites is a TV series, co comedy series called Dinner Ladies. Have a look at that. That is absolutely stunning. Absolutely loved that one. Um, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to reading it. It's quite a long book, so it's probably not one that I'm going to read in any great hurry. Uh, it's so it's probably going to carry over. Um, but yes, I'm um, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading because I I'm really intrigued by her early life. I'd like to to know what formed um, the woman and the comedian that she became. Right, so that's my first pick. Let's move on and see what we're going to replace a memoir or biography with and then spin the wheel again. Okay, so I've replaced a memoir or biography with a book set in the distant future as per the last clip that you saw. So let's run the second spin. A book with two points of view. Apologies if the cameras move around a bit. Um, in between uh, takes, I've just nudged the camera somehow, so I don't think it's quite in the same space. But uh, from what you just saw, then the second spin gave me a book with two points of view. So this one was quite easy. I picked a romance novel and I've picked Aries by Felicity Heaton. This is book one in her uh, Guardians of the Underworld series. It's based around um, the sons of Hades, who are demigods, and the women who become their happy ever afters. This is told from both the main character, Ares' point of view, and his one true love, uh, Megan, who he meets. She's also a demon, and he has to... Um, help her and protect her uh, from something that's going on in her life. I don't know anything more about it than that. I've owned this book for a few years. I've loved everything that I've read by Felicity Heaton. She is one of my original romance authors that I got into when I really started getting into romance about 10, 12 years ago. Um, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to picking this one up this month and finding out more what it's about and seeing if I can get drawn into this new series by her. So I'm also taking part in a read along this month. I don't think I mentioned that at the start of this video. And that is um, with the Wizardly Duo Discord. Uh, I joined that a couple of months ago just to get some more fantasy recommendations uh, because it's all people who read a lot of fantasy. And one of the guys who runs that, Andrew, he decided that he was going to start a trilogy and he set it up as a read along on the Discord as well. And in February, the intention is that we read book two. Book two, uh, so the series is the Lycanius trilogy by James Islington and book two is an echo of things to come, um, obviously by James Islington. This picks up, I think, from where the last book left off um but i don't really know anything about what's set to happen in this book i haven't read the blurb i enjoyed the first book it's not one that's really stayed with me much other than that there's this barrier that's keeping evil at bay and then there's these three young people who are going through various trials um who ultimately are going to be stopping this barrier from coming down 
Um, so as far as I can tell, that's what it's all about. Uh, this is going to be following the three main characters again. Um, and also a fourth character who came into their own towards the end of it. We found out who they were. So I'm looking forward to picking it up and looking forward to continuing it. It is a bit of a chunker. It's a library copy, so it's well used. Um, so it does sit a lot larger on the shelf than um, it would if it was a brand new copy. So it does feel like it's an absolute massive one to get through. Um, so again, not sure if I'm going to finish it in February, but it's definitely one that I aim to pick up so I can carry on with the read along. So then on uh, YouTube, I saw Sam over at Thoughts on Tomes announce that she's going to be doing a readathon called Shiftathon. And this is based around her love of paranormal romance. She's doing this in partnership with a friend who I don't think is on here, but that's someone she talks to through Twitter. Um, I'll try and link the announcement video down below, but it's going to run from the 16th to the 22nd of February and basically read shifter or paranormal or any other type of romance novel in that sorry about the wobble the cat decided he needed to join me um any other book in that sort of um vein so there's five prompts that they have given to us um and i will just read those out to you uh prompt number one is a book with shifters other than werewolves easy there's a lot of those around Prompt number two is read a book with vampires. Prompt number three is read a book with fae or elves. Prompt number four is read a book with a paranormal creature from an, a religion. So things like angels or demons or djinn. And prompt number five uh, is a book with zombies or ghosts. So I will just talk you through the books that I've picked. It is one book per prompt. Um yeah so this is why i thought because it's five books i picked five romance novels um so they should be able to get through them very very quickly so like i say the first prompt is a book with a shifter other than werewolves and this is easy i have a brand new release that i am most anticipating it comes out on the 15th of february and that book is Fury of Isolation by Corinne Callahan. It is the next instalment in her Night Fury series about dragon shifters. And I think this is going to be Sloane's story. Um, I'm really, really pleased that she's ramped up the writing and that she's getting on with this series because we were left hanging for quite some time. I think she must have had some issues, some health issues and family issues. So it's taken her a little bit of time in between books, but we seem to have quite um the role going at the moment so i want to read them as soon as they come out so this is going to be an excellent book to kick off shift of thon on the 16th of february prompt number two was to read a book with vampires in i had to go looking for this one i wasn't too sure what i was going to read then I remembered that I had um, a whole series of books by Felicity Heaton that I have started but got a bit stuck on. Um, so I'm going to read the third book in the series and it's her Vampire Erotic Theatre series. And I'm going to read book three which is called Seduce. This is about one of the founders of the theatre, Antoine, and the woman that he falls in love with. Um, Again, so this is, you know, paranormal romance. So there's going to be some cheese in it, um, but it's going to be a fun ride. I'm going to enjoy it. No doubt the female in question is going to be sassy and fiery and kick ass and stand up for herself. Um, and Anton's going to have some work on his hands to... Uh, get her to accept his world and she's probably going to be in some danger so there's probably going to be some visitations from other characters in the first couple of books uh, so that we can protect this female that he finds and I'll just see where it goes from there. Prompt number three was to read a book with Faye or Elves. Now I'm bending this a little bit. I'm going to read A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Mass. Now technically Brees and, um, and Feyre are, are Fey, I think. This is the 
short story um, set in the same world. So it follows on a little bit from the end of A Court of Mist and Fury. Uh, no, A Court of Wings and Ruin it follows on from, sorry. Um, but then the next uh, book is A Court of Silver Flames and we move on to other couples in this world. But this just has a little bit of final, you know, I think it's slice of life type thing for Reese and Feyre and the rest of the court. Um, so I'm looking forward to picking that one up and knocking that one off of my TBR as well because I've tried to pick books that are already on my TBR and not buy anything new. Prompt number four was to read a book with a paranormal creature from a religion. Now again, I've bent the rules on this one and I've doubled up and I've used Ares by Felicity Heaton for this one. Ares is a demigod. Um, the Greek gods were the Greek religion at one time. It might not exist anymore as we know it, but it's there. So I'm going with it um, and I've already talked you through what this one is about. Um, so yes, so I'm looking forward to knocking that one off of my TBR as well. And the final prompt was to read a book that has zombies or ghosts in it. Now again, I'm bending the rules a little bit and I'm reading The Curse Keepers by Denise Grover Swank. This book is about two young people uh, who have been told that they are the guardians of a gateway that is stopping. I love my cats, I really do. They are the guardians of a gateway that is stopping evil spirits from coming through. However, they are not ever supposed to meet because if they do, then the barrier will come down and the evil spirits will come through into our world. It's a bit of a romance as well, um, so it should be fairly quick to read through. Um, so yeah, so again, it's another one that's off of previous year's TBR. So it should knock these books off my list um, and reduce that TBR down by quite a bit. So those are the books that I plan on reading for Shiftathon. I will try and link uh, Sam's announcement video down below so that you can go and have a look and uh, see if it's something you want to take part in yourself. Let me know if you do, because I'd love to know what you're reading as well for each prompt. Um, and yeah, yeah, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, I do have one more book that I want to talk about because I know that I'm going to drop everything to read it. It's a new purchase. It's going to be a new purchase. It's one of my anticipated books. Um, and it is How Good It Was by Scarlet Cole. And this releases on the 22nd of February. It's the third book in her Sad Fridays series. Um, the Sad Fridays are a group of rockers from Manchester in England and the women they fall in love with. This is the fake relationship trope based on the unplanned pregnancy trope. So I'm looking forward to this because it's the drummer, Luke. Um, Luke has been going off the rails for both of the previous books and they haven't really known what to do about it. Uh, they're all a bit worried about him because he's overusing drugs, he's overusing alcohol, he's overusing sex and he needs to be brought back into line and one of his one night stands is the uh, influencer who brought the Sad Fridays to the attention of the world at large and got them their fame um, and yeah she fell pregnant and to save her career she now needs Luke to try and fake a relationship with her and that they're in love because she's supposedly meant to be this wholesome, sweet, never going to put a foot wrong character on social media. So yes, yeah, so I was exploring the uh, fake world of social media a little bit there as well. Um, but again, it's I've, I've loved the first two books. I've loved Matt and Jace's stories. Really looking forward to reading Luke's stories. And I know that she already has an idea of the HEAs for the final two band members and hopefully those will be coming out later this year um but yes really really excited for that one because i follow scarlet cole on instagram and she keeps posting these really not safe for work uh pictures and teasers so yes um i'm really looking forward to picking that one up as well 
Other than that, I don't have any other reading plans for the month. I think that's plenty enough. I know a lot of them are romance novels. I know that I can run through romance quite quickly. You know, if I wanted to bring my TBR down um, in any great hurry, I could just blitz through the unread romance on my TBR and I could get rid of nearly 200 books in, you know, in one go. Um, but yes, I'm, um, I'm having to have a look at it. The only thing I haven't done for this month is I haven't picked a backlist title for February. I'll have a look. Um, if I get to a point where I'm mood reading and I'm not really in the mood for anything that's on the TBR, then I will have a look and see if anything in a previous February takes my fancy. Now, you may have noticed that I didn't actually tell you how I got on with January's Wheel of TBR. I'm going to wrap that up um, as part of my January wrap up like I normally do. So I will tell you then how I got on with those books. So that's everything for February. What are you planning on reading in February? Please let me know in the comments box down below. I'd love to chat with you all there. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, then welcome. Why aren't you subscribed? Please do so by clicking on the little red button below this video. And my videos go up at 6.30pm UK time every single Monday. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.